So I just changed the height and width to 100 and set the, moved it back uh, by 50. Okay, and we'll move it there. Test it again. Okay, now it's spawning in the center. Now to test for collisions, we want to create a boolean variable initially set it to false and if boundaries so if the player registration point, which is the bottom center of the player movie clip, if it hits any any point on the boundaries movie clip, and since I set this to true, it's not just testing for the bounding rectangle intersection or a collision, it's actually testing every, uh, every point on the actual boundary that's occupied by some color. So if it does hit a boundary, then we want to say we found the collision, flag it as true. And if we found the collision, then we want to, there's probably a clean, cleaner way to do this, but just for the sake of time. So basically, if we if our player has fallen into one of our boundaries, we just want to increment uh, the location of our, or move our player up just a little bit, 0 0.1, until it's no longer overlapping with a boundary. And we also want to test it again to see if it's still overlapping, and if it is, then we'll move it up again. So collision equals false okay and we're retesting it and finally um, if we have encountered or found the collision then we want to reset our downward velocity to zero and now let's test it out okay so it falls onto the boundary and stops there. Now we want to add user input. So go back to our key down handler and we want to, depending on which key was pressed, uh, we want to process them accordingly. In case um, key code of 37 corresponds to the left arrow and 39 is the right arrow. Also we want to process jumps so let's do case 38 which is the up arrow. Okay, when when our left arrow is pressed, we want to change our horizontal velocity to negative 7, um, or whatever speed you want to specify. And when our right arrow is pressed, we want to make it positive 7. When our up arrow is pressed, we want to set our vertical velocity to negative um, just negative 20 for now, Let's see what that's like. We also want to process when the key is no longer being pressed. Okay. So whenever the left or right arrow is no longer being pressed, we just want to set horizontal velocity to zero. Let's test that out. Okay, left, right, 
and up. So we have our jump. Now let's test if uh, we could actually create our boundaries and see if we could walk around in our new environment here. Just any tool you like. Um, it can be any color, but okay, we'll create a boundary here, a platform here, another one down here, and maybe a little ramp or something, I don't know. And an incline to test that out. Save, run. Okay, so it's working all right, but as you can see, it's not it's limited to this stage. For example, if I jump off the stage, then it doesn't follow me. So we finally, the last thing we need to do is add scrolling. So back to our scroll stage function. It's just a two-liner here. First, we need to move the boundaries to um, accommodate the centering of our player. So what this does is it offsets our boundary um, x coordinate by the distance, the distance between the center of the stage and the player. And also we need to center our player. So we'll let that equal stage width and see how that works. All right, so now we have it following us. So that's the whole tutorial. Um, obviously, you can just go back in here and create whatever shape you like. You can extend it to, um, you know, off the stage, and it will work just fine. Hopefully, once again, there's a advanced tutorial. Um, oh yeah, that's right. The advanced tutorials will cover things like uh, handling, you know, uh, jumping in midair or uh, multiple key presses at the same time. For example, if I press right and then press left at the same time and then let go of the right key, then it just stops moving even though I'm still pressing left. So little details like that. Also the engine will actually have uh, optimization for uh, collision detection. Right now, the way I'm detecting collisions here, it's very simple. Um, if I run into the side of a shape, then it'll just kind of teleport me up. And it's it actually gets pretty complicating um, if you try to compensate for all these things. So that's, that's all included in the advanced uh, side scroller engine creating tutorial. So hope this hope this helped as an introduction to side scrollers.